It's, bro, for real. That lighter or grinder's been with me for fucking at least three years, yeah. That's fucking funny as hell. This guy, man, you're like, yo, I'll just hold on to it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, dude. This guy. That's that's sick. It's yours, bro. It's it's a. Uh, that's gonna stay here. It's a legendary Every time grinder. I come to you, I'm like, this thing's We're only around. gonna be using this grinder for Cali weed. <laughs> Hella funny. Nah, man. Um. So what's up, dude? Okay, man. You know. We got yo. Mike Rita in the fucking house, ladies yo, and gentlemen. Yo, yo, what up, everybody? Yo, we're just <laughs> chilling out. We're over here smoking some weed. I, this is my third or fourth day in Cali. I've just been chilling out, and uh, now we're in the studio. It's killer, man. Honestly, I swear to God, we're, we're on the low. We're just recording some stuff for television, and uh, when you come out to Cali, especially when you come from Canada, in April, you cannot believe that shit's already blooming on trees. Oh, Everybody's yeah. already alive out here. There's just people going out. Like, it's, you, it might as well be summer. People are just chilling out already like it is. Yep. That's why the rent's so high. The rent is too damn high. <laughs> you know, if uh, but, but it's worth it, bro. At the end of the yep. day, what are we talking about here? It's We're cool. talking about a better uh, lifestyle, a more healthy lifestyle. Straight up, and it's worth the money, bro. What the fuck else are you gonna do with your money if you're not gonna enjoy your time on Earth? And I, I swear to God, I think about it all the time because Canadians can come live in America for six months without a visa. I think I'm really? doing it all the time. Yeah, you can come here for six months. I didn't months, even know that. But uh, after what six months, you're an illegal. Um, your purpose has to be like... Uh, Business. Yeah. We're in episode number six. This is a Port to Cali podcast. Um, we got a special guest here, Mike Rita from Canada. E- the, e- co- the comedian Mike Rita. Yo, yo, welcome. And back to what we were saying, bro. Like, what what are you doing in Cali right now? I hear you're... I've seen some stuff with the Portuguese kids and... Uh, Taylor and all that, man. What's Honestly, going on? man, we're putting together a project right now so that we can represent our people, the Portuguese people, on a platform that's pretty much never been represented. I mean, you see a lot of old school Portuguese shit represented, but you never see the new school people represented. The exactly. literally millions of immigrants that left the country and have started a new life here. And, and there's a whole first generation of uh, Portuguese people that are uh, underrepresented and misrepresented, right? Not everybody's a construction worker. Some of us are artists. Mm-hmm. And uh, and a little bit of representation on television goes a long way, and that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Damn. So it's it's something hooked up with the uh, RTP, I heard. Like, it's like a TV well, show? Well, we're going to try, yo. Like, it's going to be a TV show... Right now, it's just in the works, like, pilot-wise. Mm-hmm. But pilots are how everything starts. I mean, Seinfeld started with a pilot. A lot of things start with a pilot. You know, not everybody just buys a script and buys six episodes. Yeah, this would be sick, dude. That's what I'm saying. It's good to you see know? you guys just... I mean, to be able to see you guys on uh, on TV and stuff is just going to be awesome, bro. Like, Yo, imagine that. You know what I mean? Saying, so yo, you like, got an East Coaster, you got a Canadian, and then you got Taylor from the West Coast. That's what I'm saying, man. It's we really sick. tried to find so much representation. If there was, I'm sure if there was a West Coast dude from Canada, we would have got him too, but those guys are slacking out there. Yeah, man. Yeah, Taylor represents you guys so well because he is the hella cool Portuguese type of like, yo, man, California Portuguese people are different than the other Portuguese people. Mm-hmm. You guys have absorbed the Californian lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So like, like, like you can meet a Portuguese guy who's like 50, he's like, ah, hey, man, no. Uh, Portuguese play hella good today, huh? And you're like, what the fuck? I guess. I guess, dude. You know, you're like, that's pretty good. Because where we're from, it wouldn't be like that, you know? Yeah. Like, where we're from, everything's tough. Because that's what it... You guys, it's, everything's fun. Everything's chill. Everything's enjoyable. You all have fun. Yeah, You know, man. go out. Have a good time. Have a good meal. Drink your coffee. We work too hard out here to keep us, like... I'm saying. ...stable and stuff. So, you know... Work hard, play hard. You know what I mean, bro. In the East, because we got the winners, everything's about being tough. You gotta be tough. You gotta be rough. You gotta be ready for the hard times. The hard times. Uh, what do you? What do you mean? Uh, you, a lot, a of, lot tough of guy, that. tough guys persona out there. Oh, bro, everything's about being a tough. I guy. never it's been not to about the East Coast. Guy. Ah, it's tough guys. A lot I'm tough sure. Guys. I'm sure there's good people. Though. Great people. Yeah, it's yeah. good place, but it's like, yeah, dude. I the uh, the lifestyle out here. I mean, I guess Nicole just don't get caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time i guess it's just california has its perks but you know there's also a lot of things that uh can go wrong if it's like you know if you don't know where you are whatever dude like there's there's you know just like anywhere in the world bro there's dude, there's all kinds of little places there's a great saying and it's like in california the people in the cars don't rot but in the east coast they do i just made up that saying but it's <laughs> 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 that's an old saying <laughs> that's an old saying that's about 30 seconds old I thought about it I'm like yeah because the cars out here don't rot and neither do the people 
I didn't either. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm. this, mm-hmm, take this. And I'm from the East, and I know, man, that that cold fucks you up. It makes you deluded. It makes you, <laughs> like, you're, like, inside the house for, like, four months. You're just tripping out. You're ready to, yeah, you know, like, I got out here. Oh, that's so unprofessional of me. No, dude, it's cool. I had the dryer going for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, that motherfucker is on? Yeah, we smoked dude. before this, so, you know. Holy shit, that's so I mean, it's Mike funny. Rita, guys. I mean, you know, come this on. This is a loose interview. We're, we're having fun. I can't even explain to you guys, man. Like, anybody listening and enjoying this, just know that, like, most of my day in California is spent eating in and out and smoking weed. I really just... <laughs> I even told the customs guy, he's like, uh, what's the purpose of your trip? I was like, man, you know, smoke some weed, eat some burgs. He was yeah. like, yeah, all right. Yeah, I swear to God, he didn't even care. He didn't... He wasn't like that. He kind of stopped my shoes. Dude, like, all right, buddy, weed is like fun. cigarettes now. It's funny as hell. That's all. right. And, and, and it's yeah. perfectly legal in Canada and perfectly legal in California, like, across the board. So uh, it's it's not illegal to say that to a customs officer. Not that he would say anything. anything. I'm literally coming from a legal place. And, right, right. All right, Canada has weed legally nationwide. So, like, you can just drive across the country with ounces, and that's your legal right. Yeah, because it's like, oh, it's my personal. It's my personal, and I'm going across the country, and I'm doing my thing. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, some, some, some places in Canada don't let you smoke outside, but, like, I'd say 80% of the country, you could just smoke outside wherever you smoke a cigarette, and it's fucking sick. What the heck? Oh, I mean, that's, like, how it is out here, too. Yeah, but, like, but like I smoking mean, designated sections are for both people. It's fucked. It's good to know, man. I mean, I wanted, I know a lot of people, I met a lot of people through... Porti Cali and um, seeing how beautiful uh, Canada is, bro. It's just like, my gosh, man. There's some. There's a whole other world out there, man. I always wanted to go travel. That's the place to go, honestly, on my list. Like, yo, go to Canada. Go check yeah, out man. Go check out Toronto. I gotta like, make sure you're in town too. You gotta show me around. Yeah, man. Uh, okay, if if like people Comedy are listening, clubs. I want to go see you uh, stand up and shit. We have our own California, and it's called British Columbia, and it's it's <laughs> on the west coast, and they don't get snow like either they don't do any kind of they are you guys just with like a rainy season like there's a real rainy season in those places and, and but they still have like lush forests mm. and they have that same kind of greenery and vibe and it's uh, on the west coast though and it is on the oh, west coast oh okay i see what so you're it's saying the same mountain range that goes all the way to salt lake city and like utah and all those kind of things like northern cali the like rocky the, mountain the rocky mountains yeah, go yeah all the way up to the canadian Rockies. i remember that <laughs> yeah you're like wait we didn't, there's, a name, cool. <laughs> there's, there's a name we flew over those fuckers and we're on, on our way in it, it, hey, it's beautiful it's, right it's the coolest thing bro because you get to see how small we really are you're like these mountains look like fucking nothing right now yeah and if dude. i was next to these things they, they would end my life like i, I couldn't even climb them yeah dude. I'm dying it's it's nuts man and there's like nothing around it's like what the hell yeah it's actually untouched it, it feels like there's so many people on earth that when you get in the plane, you look around, and it's like, holy shit, there's so much land. There's, that's why I trip. You know what I mean? There's still untouched earth exactly. by humans. Right, that too. Like um, somewhere in the middle of a mountain range is somewhere that a human has never touched. There's no garbage. There's no nothing. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's amazing, man. You could see you could see life from a whole other perspective and stuff because a lot of people are stuck and trapped kind of like in their own cities. and Anybody honking they at don't somebody get out, else man. in traffic for not moving fast enough, those people don't know, man. Yeah, they got to enjoy life more. <laughs> it's just traffic. There's nowhere to go and they're just like, come on. Well, I heard that's like the norm in like New York and shit like that. Yeah, I told you they that. They just East literally Coast. just honk and scream. Bro, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's just normal, everyday shit. Like, man, oh, I would go crazy. <laughs> when I first met my girlfriend, who's now my wife, we used to. Uh, oh, is it? She, she came from an island place in Canada called Newfoundland, mm. which is like Maine or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's right. really like quiet, really whatever. And um, she couldn't believe what driving in the city was like. She's like, you honk at everybody. I'm like, because everyone's a fucking idiot. <laughs> what do you want me to do with these fucking people? They Look, this guy won't move. This guy's stuck in traffic. And eventually through her whittling away at this hard exterior of a driver, mm. eventually it was just like, there's nothing I can do. I am powerless in this situation. I must wait for my turn. Yeah, yeah. And that's it, bro. That, that weird mantra of like, uh, there's nothing I can do in this situation. So much self-control you have to have, bro. I know. I, I told my girl the other day, like sometimes I'm like, like, I become another person. Once my, I, I become behind, behind the wheel, I'm like, oh, my God, I just got cut off. What the fuck? Now I have to I get know. in front of him. And, uh, but it, I mean, precious cargo, the- precious cargo. I got to be like, my girl's in the car. I got to chill. It's funny. As yeah, that. because like, they look at you like, what in God? Like, Wait, chill the like, fuck out. An idiot. And then when she drives and I'm just chilling in the passenger, it's like, I'm always like, why are you wow. going so slow? Oh I'm not going to lie. There's a huge fear as a Canadian that when you come to America and you get into a traffic incident that you don't fuck around because people might have guns in America. That's how it, because we don't have, we have guns, but we don't have like, we don't have guns. 
Like, <laughs> people have guns, mm -hmm. but we <laughs> don't have guns. Like, there's not, like, an abundance where it comes to, like... Where it's, like... Where you you're, think California like a, might have a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know what <laughs> Yeah, I mean? you just really know who is a concealed carry or, you know, who's, like... You know, who's just thugging it. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, a... There's, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff going on out here sometimes. Okay. You know, Cali like, is, is, you know... We don't have sometimes. enough thugging and enough concealed carriers. Like, people don't bring their guns out with them. Mm -hmm. like there is no thing where you like have it in your thing or whatever the fuck like that would be so weird to do because it's like what are you doing like chill like chill. we're all we're all chilling right we're now. we're all unarmed yeah well, yeah there's a there's a honor system in canada that we're all unarmed i think it's just this it's is the, the area known for a lot of stuff i don't know people are scared to get robbed or or, or something i got right? robbed in california see i got robbed in my own city I like know. in oh, i've been i've been uh, i got robbed in san fran they cracked my car. Yeah. Oh, so that's what you mean? They didn't actually stick you up. No, thank this God. was this was something where you Bro, walked away, did came back from the car. Yeah, so Frisco's the place, man. Frisco, and I'm gonna tell you a quick story, bro. We go to the botanical gardens, uh -huh. and uh, that earlier that day, I'd asked my wife to marry me, and we went to the Golden Gate Bridge, and we went to Golden Gate Park, and we sat on the beach for a little bit, ate some shit, and then what? I don't know. I was like, in, and she was like, in the bay, you got yeah, you man. got engaged. I loved it, bro. Because that's the, super cool, bro. One time I called the when we were younger and just dating, and I called her. I was like, hey, I'm in San Francisco. Do you want to see what I was looking at? And I was sitting on like the edge of like a little cliffy area near Golden Gate, yeah. just looking over to Golden Gate, and it's so nice. There was other people just kind of chilling out. And I was just doing my thing. And she was like, that's so beautiful. I would love to see. I was like, okay, man, I'll bring you down here someday. And she laughed because we had just started dating. And so I did bring her down here one day. And yeah. I asked her to marry me. And that fucking day, but we had a sick day. We went to Fisherman's Wharf. Yep. We went to Pier whatever the fuck. 39. Yeah. And it was sick. <laughs> and we saw the aquarium. And the fucking uh, walrus guys. Just... <laughs> yeah, everywhere. And they were, it was sick. We had the whole San that's Fran sick. experience, okay? And, and to really have the whole San Fran experience, you, you had to get your car robbed. <laughs> I didn't know that. And I didn't know that. No, that's part of it. And we parked our car. We went to the Botanical Gardens on that's Martin so Luther fucked. King Drive. So nice. Like such a historic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Bro, and our car got robbed. And our passports got stolen. Oh, So wow. now the day before Damn. our flight, we leave to Canada the next day. We don't have our passports. I have to Google what to do. I have a full panic attack. Because when I call the motherfucking <laughs> San Francisco PD and report a stolen passport from my car, the lady goes, okay, um, is there anything we can do? And I was like, yes. C could you send a, can you do a something? unit? Could you send a cop to take this down? Could you, is there anybody that can help me? And she goes, um, I don't know if there's going to be a cop able to do that. I don't know if there's anyone who's going to show up to that. And I'm, I was like crazy yeah like how is this happening right. you're on your own dude i saw a park ranger because that's a national whatever the fuck so there's rangers there's not cops on 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 site so <laughs> i was like hey man my car got robbed and he's like yeah and you're in san francisco and i was like damn what? real he's shit like, you like, did you leave a backpack or something in the back seat i'm like yeah he's like yeah well why would you do that <laughs> and i was like what are you talking about bro I love, i'm like this I is so backpack. crazy hearing it from like you know, like like somebody who's not from here yeah, was not expecting yeah, it, yeah. and you're like from yeah. When you're yeah, everybody who was from here was like, yeah, don't don't leave a backpack in your back seat. Of course they robbed you. That's fucking funny, dude. Man. They took my backpack. I had our passports. It makes okay? it seem so grimy. But it wasn't it grimy because the grimy. second part of the story is the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> our passports go missing. Yeah, we 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 wait hours. We download the paperwork that we need to to fill out to bring to the airport so that they can confirm that we're Canadian citizens. There's a whole system around. If someone steals your passports, you can still get home. You don't what? have to miss your flight. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to teach anybody listening. You call the consulate of your country. Sorry, bro. I know no, I said no. I was going to roll one. I got one. such a good story. No, no, and, please. Uh, get on it. That's why we're here, man. <laughs> so when we call the consulate for our stolen passports, the guy is like some French dude because in Canada, that's half French. So you, you, sometimes you get a French guy. And, you don't, and I don't know how to speak French. So now this guy's got a fake English to me, and it's really funny. He goes like, Bonjour. and I go, hey, buddy, it's English. And he goes, uh, hello, um, yeah, and I go, hey, man. That was good. Yeah, this, man, because it's all we hear in our country. He goes, yes, oh, hello, okay. man. And I go, hey, brother. Um, I forgot. You, you, <laughs> yeah, because it's like so normal to hear a French yeah, accent. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm sure your Mexican is on point. That's our French. <laughs> so, Pretty much. You know, like, I'm sure, like, when it comes down, you're like, hey, hold on, what is going on here? Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. Oh, whatever. But whatever the fuck. If I learned more Spanish, yeah. Yeah, if, it was, yeah, if there was any actual <laughs> Hispanic in that, that would have been perfect. But, uh, it's fucking funny. The French guy goes, <laughs> so I go, hey, man, my name is Mike Rita, and I'm calling here with my wife, Danielle Morgan. Um, and we're missing our documents because our car got robbed in San Francisco. And I swear to God, this guy goes, oh, sir, do you want to know something? I have been waiting for your call for about one hour and a half. And I go, no way. He goes, yes, listen, uh, somebody has found your passport. We have her information. You can go get it. She say, uh, she found like your backpack somewhere in like forest. I was like, what? In like forest. <laughs> yeah. And near Martin Luther King drive and thing, there's a bunch of brush. And that's what? where the lady was on a walk with her friend, and what she saw was a makeup palette, a bunch of female clothing, and then a backpack. And she followed the trail to the backpack. She's like, I know there's something fishy here. That's what an right, awesome she, lady. What an awesome... Well, she said, I saw a shirt, and then I saw a makeup palette, and it was very really nice. It looked like fashionable things that I would wear and I would right. use. And I was like, whose is this? Yeah, it can't then, be just out here. That's What's going right, on? bro. This lady followed it back to my backpack. So this guy must have just been running and throwing shit out. Yeah, he's like, there's nothing in there's here. There's nothing in here. Fuck <laughs> it. And the lady finds my backpack. And in my little secret pocket where I have in my backpack is my passports. Oh, and, damn. Uh, so but were the passports me. out of the bag or they were in the bag? They're in the bag. Oh, thank God, bro. Everything the was bag. there. And, uh, that's so cool. So we lost Bluetooth speaker, laptop, all that shit. But that didn't matter. Who gives a fuck? Fuck that shit. Um... That we went to go meet this lady. It looked like she lived in front, on top of a convenience store. What? And I didn't know this existed in San Francisco. I'm which sure. is mansions. Mansions inside of buildings that have been bought out completely. And now only the storefront exists. But the whole oh, the back whole of the building is, still there. is one giant house instead of being like three or four rooming houses. See, yeah. Now I'm, I'm envisioning this. Yeah, that sounds like Frisco as fuck. Dude, it was <laughs> insane. Imagine That's that. so cool. It's like a storefront and then like a little apartment looking thing. Like you're just going up some stairs into an apartment. Bro, we walk up these stairs. That's sick. We open the door and it's a mansion. We're like, <laughs> what the? F-? I remember being like, bro, art wood ceiling. Um... Like fall, like not fall wood, live edge tables everywhere. What the hell? Bro, like the nicest rug that the lady stopped me and she goes, Hey, just one sec, your shoes. And I was like, Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Right. And we didn't even think about it. And, and, and I'm looking around and I'm like, This is still the best. And the lady goes, Mike? <laughs> and I go, Yeah, this is Danielle. And Danielle walks in and she goes, Wow, we've been waiting a long time for you guys. Thank you so much. So she opens the door the, the whole way. She's kind of just creeping at us. And we walk in. She does the whole thing. The well, shoe, you went into she, this house and everything? She let us stand in the foyer and just look. Because I'm sure in her head she's like... <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> right? Look small. It's a mansion. <laughs> and it was crazy. Everything was down. So there was like a platform where you walked in and then the whole house went into like itself. So like the living room was down this way and there was like a hallway down into it. It was crazy. That's crazy, bro. And, it, and you can't even tell it's there. You could never she tell She probably owns there. the store too. She probably owns the store. Yeah. She probably owns the that's, store. That's the life. And her father probably owned the whole building, and she was loaded, and now she has some other business. She's some software. I don't know what the fuck. It's so smart. Bro, her and her partner uh, come out. They give us our backpack with everything in it, and they hand us the passports. I start bawling right there. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. No way. I was so, I was so nervous. It was, like, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, know, damn. So I'm going to get this back to you guys. <laughs> and I was like, thank I even said that. I'm like, thank God it was people like you who found it. Who knew to call the consulate to tell them that you had found it so that we could share information. Yeah, Bro, that was... Who would know that? Like, I wouldn't know that. I, I wouldn't know that. You find a passport. What do you do? I mean, you if you call the cops, they're just going to be like, so? So? You they, know, leave, like, it, leave it where you found it, buddy. Like, <laughs> don't steal someone's passport. You're like, steal? I want to get it back to the person. So what you do is, yeah. Anybody listen, so you true. call the consulate. And you let Damn. them know that you found a passport and that uh, you want to give it back. That's super awesome, dude. Wow. What and, a story, and, right? And, and so oh. it went from bad to really it good. It went from really good, asking my wife to marry me, to really shit for a couple hours to the creep. And that was all in the same day? It was all in the same so day. So this park, is it like a cliff and it's literally right next to the Golden Gate looking over, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I've been there. And, it's awesome. I love that spot. And there's like, uh, like old... Like, Is that where you asked her to marry? No, I asked oh. her to marry at the beach part right at the bottom. There's like that nice beach. Mm-hmm. I think it's called Golden Gate Beach or Golden Gate Park. And, at and the it's bottom on the, of the park, opposite side. Yeah, yeah. Like right. On our side to the right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking at it, the it's the, like over here somewhere. And then the city's that. Yeah. That's right. And, Amazing. And the city's behind you to the left. It's Amen. really nice little place. That's super cool. Come, like... I I didn't know that you were connected in the bay like that. Yeah, because that's the bay, that's man. an amazing you know memory, dude. Oh, like, bro, that whole trip was crazy, bro. That's super that whole cool. trip started in San Francisco. My wife was pregnant. I like a selfish idiot. Instead of getting an SUV, 
said we should get a Camaro. We're going to be in California for a couple, like, we are here. <laughs> it was a 12-day trip or something like that. So what we ended up doing was driving across the whole state. I showed her everything. L.A., Hollywood, Pismo. Uh, no way. Everything in between. We, the only place that we didn't get to go, bro, was San Diego. Yes. Everything you. else we got to do. Just not San Diego. I've never been to San Diego either. And I just hear it's amazing, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I hear it's amazing, so I'd love to go. I just never been yet. And then... Uh, <laughs> you did more than me, dude. I don't think I've been to Pismo. We went to Nevada, too. No, we did no, all no, of that no. stuff, man. We did. We went to Yosemite. Uh, we went to uh, Sequoia National Park, the ones with the big trees. We went to. Re- uh, we also went to Big Basin. Which what? Is all, like, all Damn. these crazy, yeah, crazy California you things. Yosemite, Big Basin, Sequoia. They're all, like, right beside each other, though. Like, if you just plan it out, you can hit one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, and then have yourself a day. I'd say hit Yosemite in the evening because there's less people. And, and the, it's a gorgeous place to be. You know, there's like a beautiful thing in Yosemite. It lines Yosemite. up with the sunset. Boom. Bro, we're big fans of that. The but, fire bro, waterfall, like, right? Yeah, we always wanted to do that. Like, man, Yosemite was so beautiful, I can't even explain. And it must be even better in the off season where you can kind of just park your car, go for a hike, and just get out there, bro. You don't realize that you did more than most Californians because some people really can't get out. Yeah, because you're working the whole time. Exactly. You have the weekend only. Whereas yeah. I had, this was my trip. That's I a planned trip. two weeks. Perfect, dude. Bro, like that we, was that's such a cool sh- ass. Like, we you did, did everything. Javi, we did, did everything. We went to uh, Vegas. Uh, there you go. We went to New Vegas, Old Vegas. Had a fucking time. Some fucking guy on the strip offered us a prostitute for free because my wife was pregnant. <laughs> And he was like, hey, as a gift from me, guys, to you, one free hour with a lady. Uh, and I was like, a nice little threesome for you guys. Have fun. And I was like, what are you fucking nuts? This was on the strip? On the strip. <laughs> and he was uh, what the albino. Hell? He was albino. He had the red eyes and shit. I was like, this guy's bananas, bro. Dude, it, I bet you there was no other girl. <laughs> that no, sounds no, like no. That just, sounds like some crazy he's shit. Just, he's just his own weird freak. He's like, yeah, put on a wig. It's him. It's him. It's me with a wig. What do you dude. mean? Uh, <laughs> dude. What do you mean, dude? I'm nah, cool. nah, fucking uh, Vegas is fun, man. We're planning to go there for my 30th, man. Oh, man, it's it's going to be sick because it's always like my cousins, they were like in one of the last episodes. They're fucking comedians too, man. And in my eyes, like they, they're one of them's like, like a writer for, you know, he, he, I call him a writer because he's, he's really good at writing scripts and stuff and he's getting his own uh, sk- skits out and stuff like that. So shout out to Mike and Nick. Fucking, you know, it might be some sick ass shit that... Where's uh, the camera there? Right Mike there. And Nick. No, man, I wanted to ask... Um, so like in the beginning, bro, like the starting... The beginning of Mike Rita as, as the, the the comedian, the your title of, you know, being like a... I would say like a, a, a fucking idol for the movement in cannabis in canada i mean you did a lot right for 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 that movement i mean i've i've seen you you've done a lot of things where it seemed like a protest or something like you've done where you spoke at events all the time that's what i'm trying to say like let's talk about first like that let's talk about that first and then we'll get into the beginning of what actually started you getting into comedy and stuff that's what i really want to ask but first is like yeah, let's let's go into that, bro. Like, man, getting what's involved up with the four twenty? Uh... Like, getting involved with weed cannabis was something that happened to me naturally. So when I was a teenager, I realized I had a lot of anxiety. I didn't know how to deal with it, so I just tried to breathe it out. Originally, like you know, just kind of just let it go. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes it would help, and sometimes I wouldn't. So then I started smoking pot. So then I realized that pot really did help people what age medically. Were you? You know, like if you if you had anxiety and you smoked indicas, mm-hmm. you that you really could treat your anxiety. Like you could literally sit there and feel anxiety free. And what that ended up doing was, in any time every class that I was high for, I was probably an eighty or ninety student. And anything that I wasn't high for, I was like a sixty or fifty student. And it was only because my focus in certain classes was so much higher than the other ones. Mm-hmm. Some classes I couldn't focus, so I couldn't absorb the knowledge. So this is what begins my world of 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 openly speaking about my personal experience with weed now and i know this isn't for everybody but it, that's what it was for me so i got you skip forward to like 2011 2010 um marijuana is still pretty far away from being legal in canada uh, I'm, I'm 19 or 20 years old i realized that there's a, a marijuana movement happening and they're meeting on 420 and they're gonna rent like a pa system and they're gonna just chant some shit. So I show up to that. What? Just pure grassroots shit. That's and, sick. And, and there was about, I don't know, 50 people there the first year. What year was this? 2010. 2010. Okay. Maybe even early, maybe 2009, but something like that. 
So about a decade prior to legalization. Mm -hmm. In Canada. Mm. Wow. So 2020 is when it became legal? 2018. 2018? I think, is the first year of legalization. Like, fully, like, at the end of the year, we... we, we, uh, Do they have a tax out there, too? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you go to club, there's, like... Well, it's not state and federal, but it's it's basically just like that, right? <coughs> like what they do out it's, here. Um, <coughs> yeah, where we're from, it would be your state tax. It's through the roof on that shit. Because <coughs> they control it. The state controls which products make it to market. And what, what were you, like, straight up fighting for in that? I, like, all, all I wanted was for people to understand mm-hmm. that I wasn't smoking weed as a drug Mm-hmm. addict but i'm not smoking weed and it was high it was in your drug. comedy too like that's right i was already a stand-up comic by then but you were talking about <coughs> i think you there was like a weed related stuff in and then you were talking about the portuguese community and how it's like yeah and the you stigma know, behind it growing like, up being like a a drug addict or something yeah, <laughs> it's like, like you're, you're not gonna a, smoke drugs you're gonna be a crackhead yeah, it's like drug. i'm smoking weed yeah 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 so that whole stigma it's was a totally one different of the things time. that led me right to want to openly speak against that kind of stuff but I like yeah. that it went into your art too, bro. It went into your oh, I had your to. skits and yeah. I, I needed it to be part of my writing. I needed it to be part of my performance because then it, it was in comedy. You have to stay true to yourself, and then the audience will find you. Mm-hmm. Like there's people don't think, but there's millions of people who have almost similar stories or like the exact same story as yours. And as a performer, if you can put that out there, some people put it out through music, some people put it out through painting. I, I do it through stand up, man. Yeah, and. Um, and, and, yeah. and that helped you, you know, artistically and helped you probably um, not feel so bad about it, dude. Because, like, they, they make you, I don't know, dude. So, like, with, with me, I started when I was, like, 16 after my pops passed, right? And I kept fucking smoking ever since because that was something me and my boy did. Because uh, it was, like, we just got to get out and get away from our lives in a way. But it, it didn't, like, really... in like fuck up our our lives where we're like okay now let's try fucking coke now let's do this yeah, now let's exactly. stab a needle in our arm it's like fuck that dude the the, it, it, that, that's know? such a lie i've always kept it green i never wanted to even pop a pill honestly i'm not one of those people but if if that's your thing do your thing bro I'm, it's i'm not one to to judge but the main point is just that growing up it was it was taught that this is just so bad bro the devil so and bad. shit but when you know, you're young it is bad because you shouldn't be smoking super young i feel like for someone who's i would say 18 19, 19 yeah. yeah you can definitely start getting into it because you're you're legally an adult and you can make the right choice to like use it Shh. as as something that really i mean a lot of people <laughs> use this this herb for you know a lot of you know rehabilitation a lot of fucking yeah a lot of too, you know, sure. no. active people Canada, smoke weed bro the, you know uh, that's the method right now that seems to be working the best is that people in vancouver i can't remember their name now fuck but right. they're doing like god some the something mission man fuck i can't remember their name. oh something smith ted smith mm-hmm. he gives weed to addicts so that they can right. start and, and if, if they start showing improvement they get more weed right and then they're off of heroin we're talking people who are on borderline about to die, mm-hmm. who are now their worst part of their life is that maybe they eat hot dogs too many times a week or some <laughs> shit. You know, like, th- yeah, these man. guys are doing God's work there. And I want you to know the government tries to shut them down, and the public always has, there's always public outcry. I bet. And, and everything gets delayed again, and they don't get shut down. Once in a while, it's like, they, they threaten like they're going to do it again. Like, you can't be giving these fucking, you can't be giving these crackhead people weed and trying to rehabilitate them. Okay. Do they give weed to like 100 people and only five or six every couple weeks starts getting better? Yeah, sure. But I mean, that's like they're helping people, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, Versus just watching them when you drive watch by. Them dry, yeah, that's and right. Dry up on the side of the road. Filming bro. them while you're giving them a dollar. I hate that shit. That's just I, no, I don't ever want to be that, that guy. Lame, that's what I'm trying to say. So the, the main thing with the homeless is like, yeah, you could pass around joints and, and weed because honestly, that's probably the best thing for them bro because a lot of them got on the streets for whatever reason but it's like you can be an addict from from not even wanting to get into hard drugs it could be from prescription (laughs) drugs and you could be a prescription drug addict and then use tree to get off that too i can't remember what it is anymore it helps every street drug addict Mm -hmm. so i think for it's like six to one that 
people who are at home addicted to drugs mm-hmm. uh, that started off uh, like painkillers and stuff like that. I think it's six to one. It might probably be higher. But in Canada, it's six to one. And here, I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's hella high out here. So dude. that means out of, of, out of a group of 10 addicts or something, whatever the fuck, six of them probably started with... The doctor's prescription. T3, some fucking painkillers, some Oxycontins or some shit. And, and it's the truth because when you... Think about how crazy that is. Yeah, like, I shout out Soft White Underbelly. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, Fools of that guy interviews that have all these real stories and uh, it's a really really good um like i would say channel and everything but dude this guy he, he's been killing it he's just he's getting the real story from people's perspective and, and like from the streets and like how they how they even got in the streets and a lot of the stories could start with you know i i got in this accident and then fucking i couldn't work and then they gave me these pills and then i couldn't afford the pills no more and it's like dude like and and you, I used to work at a lot of cannabis clubs here in San Jose, like a lot of them. And I remember helping cancer patients. And I remember thinking, like, damn, I wish I could have helped my pops out with this. He could have got off cigarettes hella wow. quick. Cigarettes you know? and alcohol are fucked. That's that's who makes he up wasn't the rest a of those addicts. Bro. My 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 dad was just a cigarette smoker, like kind of like it, it was like a Portuguese thing, dude. You know, but you know that's what I'm saying is like working at these clubs. It was like, dude, I saw improvements in people every day. Like every day, there was a guy that came in, fucking all the time, and it was like, now I'm like, the legalization, in my opinion, isn't that good because we had Prop sixty four or some shit, because that's what, in this time I heard it was taking away from the grower. In my opinion, it was like making the big business, making the federal government step in and stuff. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of clubs getting shut down, and now they can be more legit. And we kind of can't change the way it is now. You know what I'm saying? But Dude, how frustrating is that, though? But um, what I'm saying is, like, those smaller growers are still going to be getting shut down because it's not the ones that are getting taxed by the government. And then what happens to the plant? We have that issue, if, too. If they fully take over, what's going to happen to the plant? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's we're like, going gonna to start getting fucking Costco weed. And stuff it's going like to be like spice. Do you guys have a spice issue no, out there? No, man. Thank God, That's like bro. in the UK right now. There's yeah, a big yeah. spice thing I heard still going on. But Yo, I swear to God, we the reason that spice. we don't have spice is mm-hmm. because weed, even in Canada at a base level, is so cheap. Like, you'd be nuts to try spice over weed. Oh really? Like, weed's cheap, bro. Like, and it's good tree. Like everybody is like knows how to really grow out there now, huh? Like you can get AAA bud for two dollars, three dollars a gram. What? What? Do you, wait, what? But like you have to buy it in an ounce form or something like that. Two dollars? Yeah, but like we're talking AAA bud. We're not talking like quads, right? You guys call them quads out here too? No. Fuck. Okay. What is this? <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, so in Canada, <laughs> we just we, got we fire have... top shelf and then mid, and I think that's mids. it. Mids. We have mids too. Yeah, you know what I so mean. So mids is just below. So like I, I wouldn't even you said like two dollars a gram. That ain't nothing, dude. Like okay, but you have again an ounce. Whoa, you have to buy an ounce. That's cool. We have something called value buds, and that's how cheap you can get decent legal weed. It's like fifty dollars an ounce. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's like sixty dollars an ounce. So if you break that down, it's fucking nothing, bro. And it's good. It's it's it's. I'm smoking with the homies all weekend. And I don't want to blow a, a fucking lake, wad. Lake tree. That's what I'm saying. We're going to be sitting at the cabin. We're going to mm-hmm. be chilling out. Mm-hmm. I have I have an ounce of dank. And I have an ounce of daytime. We're just chilling out smoking. What weed. does the ounce of fire go for out there? Like An what, ounce of legit fire. That you can compare to Cali weed. That I know you know weed. So what? If, if You know what I mean? Because I know you know it's super crazy expensive out here. It, it could be as much as $10 to $12 a gram. So then when you go to pay for an ounce, you're paying your full ounce Two, price. 280 type shit and i mean that's but bro we're talking fire though no yeah Fuego, like up here dude you can get up to the 400s for ounces for yeah dude it's nuts see that's too much <laughs> and then tax too there's no, like no no see like <laughs> that's okay, how fucked yeah, up it yeah, is like the, like the our clubs legal out here market our legal market it, yeah. our, our legal market is actually being destroyed still by our, our gray market because no one is enforcing um fuck, i can't remember their names right now the little growers, the craft cannabis growers. Mm-hmm. So the guys who only grow, you know, two, three thousand plants, but it's two, three thousand of, of fire plants. Whoa. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're selling, you know, like, shout out one company right now, uh, Headwater Cannabis. These guys do it the best in Canada. I smoke their weed all the time. And it's what we would call top shelf, quad, whatever the fuck you, you call it, is what we call it there. And Hell the yeah. weed is, bro, it's, it's perfect. Sometimes it's almost white because it's yeah. so perfectly grown that you're like, holy shit. And, <laughs> and nothing ever comes vacuum sealed so you don't lose any of that 
natural bud uh, oh, that's look sick. and form. Shit. Man. Professional. Dude, they're the fucking goddamn best, bro. That's I'll sick. put them up against anybody in the world. I swear to God. And it's only because no matter where you live, there's only so much you can do for a plant. You can... True. Like, even... Like, the best outdoors clearly not as good as the best indoor. So, anybody can emulate those indoor conditions if they work hard enough and mm-hmm. then it comes down to soil and nutrition and these guys have it as good as anybody else i think hey shoot it, i mean if you get it down i mean they're starting to perfect it and, i'm saying there's, you know? there's ceilings to this shit and we're starting to get pretty fucking close just like everything else bro my mom talks about apples when she was a kid she's like an apple nowadays is like huge i was like yeah she's like when i was a kid an apple was like a, a, what a strawberry is now. I'm like, what? And she's like, and a strawberry was a grape or smaller. I was like, what? It's like GMO. Yeah, she's like, you don't know, Mike. Like, an apple was just so small. You took like three big bites and you chucked it. You, you guys have like that, that type of issue out there too, of course, Yo, right? Yo, trust. We're, like GMO uh, type foods and we, stuff? Because we, half our year, we can't rely same, on, our own, on our own shit. So a lot mm. of our stuff comes from Southern California or Mexico. We got mm. yeah, obviously NAFTA mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck. So um, NAFTA holds it down for us in the winter time. We we buy tons of your shit and we give you some of our shit. In this room. Give us your <laughs> strawberries. Give us your grapes. Give yeah, us your dude. Uh, mangoes. Give us your your pineapples from Mexico. You seen how many strawberry fields we have out here, bro? It's beautiful. Bro, I love it, man. My <laughs> favorite, one of my awesome. favorite places I ever drove through in California is Modesto. Yeah, now it's kind of a shithole of a, of a, like because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's just farm, but it's <laughs> it's symmetrical farming. Yeah. So yeah. when you drive, even if you're doing like you know whatever the highway <laughs> speed is, you look over for a second and it's. <laughs> Yeah, just and you're like, oh, that's so fucking trippy. That's and then once in a while, you are. just see a guy for a split second in the field, <laughs> and you're like, oh, that is, uh, whatever. It's such a trippy place. To <laughs> Shout out Modesto. You don't yep. got much going on, but what you do have going on is, is top class. Exactly, man. There's there's so much fucking. I mean, that's what San Jose was, dude. I mean, San like Jose used like to that? look like that. It, all, all orchards, and now because yeah, of those hills. Bro. And now when you look at it, everything, it's like, holy shit! It's all fucking apartments, Sheesh. and you know. I love the crazy. idea of what California is and was. Because, yeah, once upon a time, this was like, this was, imagine people coming from the East Coast. Mm-hmm. This was their landing spot. They finally made it after months of traveling, whether it was by <laughs> boat or it was by literally cross-country, like, train. I don't right. know how long that shit took, but it must it must take forever, like like a Real week or shit. two, you know? Yeah, that's my dad's story right there. He came from the Azores, and he lived in, I think, uh, fuck, where did he live? I don't know, somewhere on the East Coast for a little bit. Yeah, one and of then, those boom. cities because you exactly. just come here and then... And then and then they're like, all right, let's go to San Jose. All our family's sure, going over there. we'll go to California. And San now Jose. all my family from San Jose is gone. Everybody went all over the fucking place. It's like, everybody's like, all right, I'm out. You know what I mean? A lot of people are moving, dude. What's the coolest state that is in California? You mean cool city, city, right? Cool right. city in California. No. What's the best state outside of California? Oh, 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 best state? Like, say, like, and not New York, obviously, or something like that. Like, like if you got, if you got a free ticket to anywhere other than New York, Gosh. where would you go? What state? Fucking Florida, Montana, I would, Utah. I would want to check out Texas, because it's getting crazy yeah, out there. Yeah, cool. Texas, it, Austin, Houston. A lot of people are, down, boom, boom. everybody's moving there. I feel like They're changing it into a blue state, because there's so many, like, young, hipper people changing the way that the, the <laughs> and those old, like, rednecky people are like, you fucking better not. Yeah, all the Californians came over there. It's because oh. of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's like, yo, it's like, <laughs> taxes are cheap. Ta- ta- and just everyone who's, like, broke, taxes are cheap. Do you like his comedy? No, I like his podcast. His podcast is amazing. His stand-up bro. is just normal, good stand-up. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, say yeah. he's like a... Okay, he's a, he's, a, he's a really good stand-up. Who's your favorite if Chappelle's comedian? Chappelle's a great stand-up. Who's your, I'm, dude, Chappelle. Bro. You know what I mean? Like, I grew up great, with but, Chappelle's show, bro. But who's my favorite? Yeah, bro. Like, who do you mark down as like, all right, that's, that's the guy? Okay, first, just before we answer that question, when I do stand-up sometimes, I'm hosting, mm-hmm. and if I'm hosting, one of my favorite funny intros is the kid doesn't have credits. It's a young comic coming up. I'll be like, ladies and gentlemen, you guys ready for your show? Yeah. Okay, your next comic. You guys remember the Chappelle show? You guys remember the Chappelle show? And then a bunch of people will be like, yeah, what? Is this guy part of that? And I'll be like, you're not going to believe this. Your next comic also watched the Chappelle show, everybody. And now while they're laughing, I just introduced the comic because now they're in such a good mood. They're like, this guy got us. And, then, and it's such a perfect intro. I don't know why it works so good. But then, you guys remember the Chappelle show? Yeah. Well, your next comic 
Also, like the Chappelle show. <laughs> Everybody like, misses the Chappelle show. Yeah, man. it's a legend show like that. I don't know why that and, show works, but my favorite stand up comic of all time. That was legendary, though. <sighs> Fuck, bro. It's like, it's either Mitch Hedberg, Mitch? Louis C.K., Dang. Or Richard Pryor. Yeah, I was about to say, where's Pryor? <laughs> it would be Pryor. Like, That's like, awesome. Like, long term, you know, like, if you walk into my office, I literally have, like, a giant painting hand-painted by one of, like, Canada's coolest, like, you know, pop artist kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, and, it, and it was, uh, it's one of those things, man, where it was, like, I can't even tell you what it was like to growing up and, and, ex- and, and experiencing that dude for the first time. I used to just buy records. Mm-hmm. I was one of those nerdy kids as a teenager. Do you know what I mean? While other kids are trying to fuck. A lot of people hitting, do like, that in uh, in Canada. It's like a big uh, shout out. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nardwar. <laughs> Nardwar is our boy, y'all. Do you, have That's, you met him? No, man. But oh, like, dude. I, I work. I, I work for the same company as Nardwar, so sometimes I like. No shit. You could hear Nardwar down the hop. Like you're, you'd be you're like, lying, and you'd be like. <laughs> You know, and you're like, oh shit, you kind of peek out, and then there's a dude like wearing a full golf yeah. track suit from like the 70s, and you're like, oh my god, and he, because he's a pretty big celebrity, no, dude. Like, he's a celebrity in a room of celebrities. He's he's one you of know? my idols in this, bro. dude. He's that guy, the best. Have you ever heard about like the legend? Well, obviously, you know Nardwar, so you know dude, what's the that, legend? The like the lengths he's gone yeah, what is to it? get information. I don't. What is because, it though? How? It's because he's Nardwar now. Everybody like... wants to give him the information. Are you the feds? So like. <laughs> The way that he does it is usually through the manager, and he wants, oh. and he knows that the manager is going to <laughs> want the Nardwar interview to blow up. So he doesn't tell the artist, and he'll set up. Okay, Nardwar, so that's the secret. This is the mom's number. Call the mom and ask him for some random information. Tell her that this is for a huge interview. It's a surprise interview. And it's stuff like that. Like I knew one of the producers. Like I was like, that's how he does it. Like yeah, yeah. Like he weaves but, his way through. That's but amazing. He's like, so start with the manager. Start with the mom. The mom might give the best friend's number. Now the best friend from childhood will be like, man, call him Jermaine. You go trip about if you call him Jermaine Daniels. He'll be like, hey, I heard you like to be called Jermaine Daniels. Is that true? And the and the rapper will be like, what the fuck? <laughs> now why you call me Jermaine Daniels? And I'm like, I'm, I'm the nerd one, you know. And, 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 and then they and, run. Like Lil Uzi. I can't be next to this man. He's the devil. <laughs> and, and how it is is that everybody wants in on the Nardward because he's built it. Like now, uh, now back in the day, I'm sure it was harder before he was Nardward because yeah. he'd, be, he'd probably call and be like, hi, I'm Nardward and I'm looking for some information. People be like, who the fuck are you, man? Yeah, but cops. eventually, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, Nardward, this you calling me? I'm looking for information on one uh, Kendrick Lamar. And you t- I heard you're a good friend of his from your childhood. Yo. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, this, what you this, need? This is going to fuck him up. Dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, But it's a sick way to do it because nobody cares. Everybody loves those interviews because he's like. I wonder yeah, how yeah. it started like that, dude. That's dude, such a genius way of doing genius. it. Genius. I'm going to conduct an interview. And I'm, what I'm going to do is He just, fooled me. I, know, I mean, it's not I never a fool. thought that's that's the method. It's just a method. It's I not just, a fooling. That's just his method. Yeah, but you he know? just made me think the whole time that he wouldn't he wouldn't like hit Does up any shame? family. Oh, actually, right behind me. It's not that it's not that he's hitting up family. It's that he hits up the manager, and then I'm sure the manager might give the mom or the aunt. I'm sure they have to get clearance for these things. Sure. That's why some interviews are a little bit deeper than others. Because I'm sure sometimes he'll call the mom and be like, "Oh, you gonna do an interview with my son about?" Fool's like, Listen. you know, you know, fools for my block. Yeah, that's oh, right. Run out. <laughs> All right, I can't do this. I can't do this. I love those interviews, man. I love those interviews. That's those so guys cool. are always blown away. By how good of a job he does, you know, like so. Have you ever met Seth Rogen? No, so random, (laughs) dude. (laughs) That Seth Rogen laugh, (laughs) dude. He's very Canadian. I want you to know, like, that's what a Canadian stoner's like. Like, Seth Rogen is what our stoners are like. Like, if Snoop Dogg is your California, dude, (laughs) that's our guy, Seth Rogen. That's the best. Like the that one. um, What was that movie? Fuck. Super um, no, 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 the other one where he was like Pineapple driving around. Express? Yeah, it was Pineapple Express. There you go. How did I not remember that? It's the tree. <laughs> Fucking classic. Sorry, bro. I just, got, I just got a message about my comedy festival that yesterday, and I was like, oh, hey, <laughs> bro. Fucking yeah. winning. And I'm going to tell you straight up, bro. What's good? Uh, uh, building a brand around your hard work is something that people need to do more of. I don't know how to explain yes, it, but like, if you're, if you're a great musician, 
build yourself a promoting brand where you promote good bands so that people who trust you will trust and you can expose other people. If, if every art form worked like that, you know how I learned that from Chappelle? Chappelle doesn't just bring up himself, he brings mm. up his boys. Every time he posts a picture of his performances, mm -hmm. it's him and the boys. And sometimes there's other famous comedians, and there's sometimes people you have no idea who the fuck they are. And that's how I feel like Dude, that's the way what's his be. face got pretty damn huge. Um, Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Bro, think about that. He just before, liked Charlie Murphy. Because I was funny. Eddie Murphy's brother, that's and they right. were always saying that. But now Dude. I know Charlie Murphy because... You know, Donnell Rawlings, bro. R.I.P. Ashy, uh, I can't remember the name of the character, but Donnell Rawlings, the mm -hmm. other guy from that. Exactly. He brought these dudes up with him. These these guys were just fucking hilarious dudes. And he's got he's trying to open up a comedy club to do the same thing where he just showcases. I'm sure a lot of black talent because you know Chappelle, Chappelle represents for his people. It's, it's cool. It's the way I heard he is. just like pulls into a town and just books a show. And Did I then... ever talk to you about that? We no. went to one of those. Really? Yeah, he did it in Toronto one day. Wow, so, that's sick. So I didn't know what bro, to think. Comic, bring that up. That's cool. You get to hear shit through the grapevine. Mm -hmm. I got to go watch Louis C.K. at our local comedy club two days before it was released. Like We got an email like, yo, Louis is coming to town. He's, it was right after the Me Too movement. So it, he, he got booked in the Me Too movement, took like a year or two off, and then he started doing shows again. And the second set of shows, or the first set of shows that he ever did in North America, he did like a corporate in somewhere mm. before that. And then he came and he started touring here in Canada and then went into the States. Bro, and he did his first North American show in Toronto. Yeah. He did it at our, lo our local comedy club, bro. I couldn't fucking believe it. Yuck Yucks in Toronto. Bro, and we got... I, I That's had, like, so fucking sick. Man, like, I'm like an OG Yuck Yucks comic. So I messaged them and I'm like, yo, I need a booth. I'm coming with my girl. We're going to watch the Me Too return of Louis C.K. It's going to be historic. And he came out and he smashed. And he was sweating. And he was nervous. And he <laughs> talked about, like, no matter what you do in life. just the, And he did that whole set that came out after on his comedy special. Like, don't ever jerk off in front of a chick. Even if she says it's okay, just listen to me. And don't. Okay, and it was this hilarious bit. We all died. <laughs> and there were like protesters and shit. And it was cool because they were like, well, I was like, what the fuck? There's protesters know. there like protesting his shit? Mm -hmm. They don't like his work? Because he was part of the Me Too thing. Remember, he got like booked doing like, he jerked aye, aye. off in front of some chick or something like that. Oh, that's, oh, that's why he made that joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <coughs> Yo, that didn't even click until now. That's a fucking, <coughs> it's hilarious, that, that bombed right there. That's <coughs> Nice. No, real shit. Now he kills it, bro. <laughs> the, uh, okay, smoky. But, um, no, but real shit, dude. It was your garage door thing, and I was like, yo, that's the same as uh, mine. What the fuck? Oh, it was and, the same and, one? And I couldn't help but like react because I was in my own world. You're like, Man, wait, that's, that's the same fucking garage door again. No, this guy's got the... They got it in Canada, too? This guy. This guy. Is we got the same guys that do all the garage. It's all over. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of pork chops. It's the same guy. He just shows up. Hey, I got a garage in California. All right, I'll see you in a couple of days. Dude, so um, what, my, my, what, what really got you into comedy? Real shit. Oh, bro, straight up? Um, yeah, man. Before I was ever a comic, bro, I was just a kid observing things. And in go. my head, I made jokes. And, I, and I, people would catch me laughing all the time. Because they'd be sitting there and they'd be, what are you laughing at me? But it was in my house making jokes. Were you the class like, clown? Always. Bro, there's a report card I have and I need to frame it. It's at my mom's house. And anytime I go over and I sleep over, I take a little glance at it and I cry. And it's my like, it, grade man. seven report card. And it says, Mike is an exemplary student. He is fantastic at communication. He is great with, uh, you know, he, was, he, he is great with also like a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. And then right at the end, it says, but I am having trouble keeping him quiet. <laughs> I cannot stop him from telling jokes. And it says That's jokes, amazing. exclamation mark, exclamation jokes. mark, like jokes. Like, Take all please, the time. can you speak with him about no jokes during the class hour? And all I would do, this is a story <laughs> that, like, man, I'll show you a text message after this. Girl, <laughs> uh, uh, not a text, like, um, whatever, like an instant message someone sent me the other day where they were like, do you remember when you were in grade seven? <laughs> we would like laugh at your jokes at the end of the day. I was like, what? She's like, remember the teacher would let you tell jokes? I was like, oh, yeah. She would let you like have so, your own little time. <laughs> Miss Devin Tavages in grade seven would let me go and tell jokes at the end of the class. And it was the craziest shit. I would sit there high, like not high, but like high and waiting for this like, oh, 
I'm gonna fuck it. When you're a kid, you don't know what to do with your energy. And it becomes this massive dopamine rush. And I would go in front of the class and just start <laughs> smashing. And I'd be like, do you remember when Federico uh, <laughs> said uh, seven instead of 17? And we all didn't. What, what, what are you doing? You don't know. Come on. And the teacher, you look at the teacher. Like, <laughs> and, you know, and it was shit like that, man. And yeah. It was like. Uh, <laughs> classroom shit. Classroom shit. And it was nothing, Good man. times, you man. Know? You were the classroom clown. So that, that excelled you from. Man. After high school, well, that was grade school, right? That's grade school. And when then, it comes to high school, yeah, I didn't do anything for the first few years because I was too nervous. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be. When did you start or, smoking weed? Second day, grade nine. Grade nine. Yeah. Second Such day. A, yeah, so do you remember day. the? Yeah. Tell me the. Tell me what happened, dude. Man, second day of grade nine. The first puffs. Um, I was already into counterculture in grade eight. Uh, my brother had a bunch of like weird CDs, man, he, that I shouldn't have been exposed to, and I was. Like ready to die and uh, the dog uh, and like Snoop Dogg uh, and like um, that's tight and like I'm trying to think of like he- Experience Hendrix all these weird CDs that I would listen to all the time oh man like Rage Against the Machine fuck yeah so my brother's 12 years older than me so he had he grew up in the 90s where I was just born into the 90s but mm-hmm. he was like born in the late 70s was a teen and through the 90s. And he, it's hilarious to think, man, because this guy exposed me to all this fucked up shit. He would watch fucked up movies with me, like Blood In, Blood Out and shit. Oh, so I was dude. always exposed to, like, druggy The California culture, culture too. That's what I'm saying, man. I, I, I didn't think Cali twice culture. about it. I was like, somebody offered to go smoke weed. A, great, a kid in grade 10 named Sebastian was like, hey, yeah, you guys want to go smoke some weed? I was like, weed? You're going to go smoke weed? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll smoke weed. He's like, cool, man. <laughs> right after school, just meet me here. We'll all go back down. Have you ever smoked? I was like, nah. He's like, that's oh, cool, man. Just, it's cool. Come smoke some weed. And I had smoked some cigarettes before. Oh, so you kind of knew what it did. I mean, if I knew you how smoked, to smoke. Yeah, it wasn't going to be such a... Um, and uh, I had smoked some cigarettes, and I thought it was so cool smoking cigarettes, but weed, here we go. But it wasn't like half-baked where... where it was worse you walk than in, half-baked. You walk into the Half-baked the store was filmed in Toronto, by the way. Shout out that, yo. Like, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Like, that convenience store is next to where we grew up. Like, in Kansas Stop, Market. bro. Dude, swear to God. Why are all these connected with Dave Chappelle, man? Yo, all Chappelle's these... back. And then, but Dude, like, that's so sick. I didn't even know that. When did it become something super professional? Like, do you remember your first show? or what, I remember what was it when something, it became professional, bro. Like, for real? When it it's clicked. Like, bro, I, 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 got, I, I was in my second year. Mm-hmm. And in this one week, my entire life changed. I used to work high rise construction. I was a, uh, I was a drywall laborer and framer and stuff. Not even yet. Oh, what? just the labor. So in high rise, there's so many people working drywall on one floor that mm-hmm. each of them needs somebody to help them out sometimes. So you know, you, you get buzzed. Hey, room seventeen, come, come help me quick. So you got to go help buddy with some, you know, move some pieces. Maybe you got to go get him some stuff. Hey, I need some plaster. Hey, I need some nails. Hey, I need some more of this. Hey, I need some more of that. So that was your job. Mm-hmm. It's actually a pretty good job because a lot of the time they don't need anything. Mm-hmm. And you're just kind of chilling out with your homie and you're just cleaning up and relaxing and sweeping and whatever the fuck. Right. But, uh, that was most of the job when I was like, well, it's like a grunt. You kind of start as like one of those guys. That... You got to do it. Bro. No, no I, honestly, that's how I did it. I, I was so young. I was 18 when I got the me job. Too. And, uh, yeah, bro. And I was scared of heights too when I was doing <laughs> yeah, construction. Yeah, high rise is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> they put you in an elevator that's like not actually an elevator. It's a cage of death. Yeah. Like, you got to go up 40 stories in this cage of death in the mm-hmm. depths of winter. Like, no, nothing blocking you. Just a little grate. Yeah, it's dude. fucking bananas, it's, man. I, I used to see those literally all over. That's nuts. So during that time, that's when it kind of clicked for you. You're working in that job. you probably like, all right, I don't want to work this no more. I want to do something I'm passionate about, right? I could see. I was work, I was doing stand-up at the time. Oh, you still do? Okay. I was doing it. I was just an amateur comic, though. But this is where I went from amateur to pro. Mm-hmm. Was the, I used to work at Blue Jay Way in Toronto, which is right next to where the Blue Jays play, the Toronto Blue Jays, the baseball team. And... Um, we were building a condo and I was about 40 stories up already and I could see from where I was the venue of this play thing that was called Cream of Comedy which is the competition for the best new comedians in all of Canada and at the time I was like man you know I'm a pretty good amateur I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna join that this year and try to win that and, then, and all my friends in construction these fucking jerks bro I'm not gonna talk to none of these guys no more they would all laugh and be like, oh, yeah, 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 this, guy, yeah, this guy's going to throw a shirt, here he goes, but it's going to... And yeah, it's going to be funny, guys. This guy, can't even, this guy can't even bring drywall up all the time. This guy's going to tell jokes. Give me a fuck. <laughs> and uh, those kind of guys. And they would always doubt me, bro. And I always be like, well, if I can... And, bro, and I, and I went and I got past the first round. And I got into the top five. 
And then from the top five, I won the thing and I won $5,000 with it. No way. And I swear to God, I was all over the press. Like, this year's cream of comedy winner is uh, Mike Rita, Portuguese immigrant, uh, Portuguese Canadian immigrant, uh, first generation born. Uh, so I got all this cool press about it. And that's how I started my Portuguese comedy career, too, because I got so much press from that. Oh, and then, shit. Um, yeah, so that's how that's the birth of that. The Portuguese comedy career is that. Were that's you the starting birth. with the, your type of comedy? Was it Portuguese from no. the start? No, it wasn't. No, okay, let's first, see. When that's I dope. first started doing stand-up comedy, it was more just local storytelling because it was more Toronto-based. Mm -hmm. I didn't do shows outside of the city yet. So when you're an amateur comic, you almost never do shows outside the city. It's mostly city-based comedy. Right. So all my jokes are city-based comedy. A lot of the stuff was where I grew up. I grew up around a lot of crackheads. I grew up around a lot of like weird people, and those were what my jokes were about. And then I finally got into a couple of jokes about my mom. One little joke about my mom, and that was my seven minutes. In, in comedy, you only need seven to ten minutes. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm looking at... You, you type in Mike Rita on YouTube, guys. Like, I mean, there's videos here that are like over 200,000 views like growing up portuguese yeah and i've seen this i love this seven years ago i've watched this one for sure but bro you could try to you find know, the oldest one i there. see no, a really no. old one here 11 years ago 11 years uh, ago you see that uh, living in toronto and immigrant moms classic that's it, that's that's it. it. living in toronto immigrant moms what i tell you that's that what, seven minutes that's it that's it bro and, and that's all i had at the time that's all i had because that's all we, i knew i was fucking 20 years old do you want to put like a little snippet of it to, yeah we to can show put a little them? snippet let's, yeah, let's show sure. them let's show them a little snippet real quick and you know what the, what was the best part of a festa when you were a kid as soon as your mom would go I should fuck la festa. in your head you're like i'm gonna see all my cousins and we're gonna fuck around <laughs> You knew you were gonna get there and you're gonna see some kid and he was gonna go, Mike! And you're gonna go, Carlos! And as soon as you guys got far away, you're like, my mom can't see me, let's get the hell out of here! And you would do some weird shit and you'd run around the church and you'd stand outside watching old men smoke. That's my uncle smoking. <laughs> then you'd hear your mom, Mike! And then you'd run <laughs> to the other side of the church. You run by some drunk guy, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> So drunk. Your mother comes by. You know, a lot of us grew up and we went to fashion and we went to all these beautiful things. And now we get to do this as, there's 800 of us in here, are you kidding me? Do you guys remember, there's only like five kids here and they're already sleeping on the chairs, look at that. How classic is that? I'm tired, make me a bed out of the chairs. And they're gonna fall asleep, even with all this noise, they're gonna fall asleep. It's amazing. We used to go to fashion and do all these crazy things and now we're adults and, I, and, and now we get to come here and do all these great things. And you know what? It's great being Portuguese. It's a beautiful thing being Portuguese. It's a beautiful thing speaking Portuguese. Like, yeah, the hell was that? <laughs> One guy can't handle it. <laughs> um, that's dope, dude, because like, like, when I think back, these are the videos. That I used to watch. I mean, you were you were known back then, and you're still making a lot of moves now. So like, transitioning Ooh, into yeah. like present day and stuff. We're talking about a, a little bit of what you're here for, like with that uh, TV show. But man, so stand up I, will take you to crazy places. Like, are that, you man. doing a show out here in Cali while you're here? No, I'm doing. I'll be back in July. Um, I'll be back in July for three dates. Then I'll probably be back for a week. I'm gonna try to extend that trip if I can, honestly. Um, and then I swear to God, bro. This summer is going to be bananas. I go from California to Portugal. We're going to be doing shows in Portugal too this year. First time I'm ever doing shows there. Holy fuck. What? So the first time you ever do show? I mean, you've been there to I've been to there travel. as a, like, a normal yeah. person. Yeah. The last time I went, I was a teenager. Uh, I haven't been there since I was a teenager, man. Those people now, like from the little village that I'm from, I might be the most famous person that's ever come from that village. Like, and you speak fluent, right? Yeah, I speak fluent yeah. Portuguese. So like, when I go there, it'll be fine. Like It's no biggie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you straight the fuck up. It's going to be bananas because the village that I'm from has got like 200 people, mm -hmm. but it's a tourist trap. It's the end of the island. So it's all like eateries. I hear you. I hear you. Like that. So everybody knows each other. So when it's like, I can't wait to show up. It's going to be like, I hope to God, all these restaurants are like, come eat here. Come eat at our place. Yeah, no, that's Come eat over here. Mike Reed is in town. Mike. Hey, like, we'd love to help because they speak really good Portuguese English. So anytime I get a message from them and we have like Zoom calls, they're like, "Yes, Mike, a pleasure to talk to you. I see all the hard work you're doing for the Portuguese community there in yeah. Canada, and it's nice that uh, you're planning to come here. Make sure that you stop by. They got good We're, English, you know. Like it's like that, you know. Like that's their Portuguese English, you know. I would never know. Damn, that's how Damn. it is. Yo, that's fucking pimp. No, because I, I I need to go travel, bro. I'm I'm totally. Have you been to Portugal? Never been to Portugal. Sheesh. Never been to Azores. Sheesh. 
so that kind of explains when I told people about this brand and stuff. It explains why it's called like Porto Cali because it's Portuguese American Apparel, but the the creator dude hasn't been or hasn't been included too much into like my own culture. Like I haven't done the things that my cousin has done. Where like out here in San Jose, the mandatory thing pretty much is to be in a band and. Every Sunday, boom, you're playing or, or practicing Sunday. during the week. You know what I mean? Like you're waking up hella early to do these parades every, every uh, you know what I mean? All the yeah. festas. I see what you're saying. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. we have the bands out here. You know bro, what I mean? A banda, bro. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, shout out shout out all the bands in San Jose and Santa Clara and everything. But it's it's a beautiful thing. It's part of our culture. We need to keep it alive, dude. Cause like I was I, in one when I was younger too. See, that's what I'm saying. And I wasn't taught Portuguese either when I was young. And that's what separates me from a lot of, you know, communication. Well, but I, I learn here and there, dude. And it's cool. But I'm and sure you can understand most times, though. No? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But what... Yeah, like, I have, like, friends at the bar and shit over at PBSJ. Shout out PBSJ, bitch. Shut There's up. a guy there. He's always... I think his name is Manuel. The fool's always fucking clowning me, like, man, shut the fuck up. You, you yeah. speak Portuguese, dude. Like, you know, tu falas Portuguese. Tu falas, me Yeah, and I'm like, no, dude. I can kind of understand, you know, but... Yeah, but that's... Why I kind of started this brand, bro, to connect more with my culture. Because you Portuguese. They don't believe that there's... Been, like, you look so Portuguese. You don't speak Portuguese. Exactly. You Portuguese. No, yeah. And then I have this brand that shouts out Portuguese, Portugal, yeah, Portugal, uh, the Azores, Portugal, 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 Portugal. And, you know, I'm going to bring out some Madeira shit and, and everything. But where are you from? What islands are, are I'm you... I'm from San Miguel. I'm from a little... Uh, nice. Zia called Rubeira Kent. Very good. Rubeira Kent is a fishing town. Uh, I never knew this. for its whaling. Whoa. All right, so there's that, and then uh, my dad was a fisherman, and my my dad's dad was a fisherman, and it was, it was just that until my dad broke the thing. He was like, ah, "I'm gonna go to Canada," That's and then he became a fisherman here. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but for real, though, like uh, whatever, bro. My fucking pops immigrated <laughs> here eventually, but uh, we're from yeah, better Canada. I'm gonna go back there this year. I'm gonna stay yep. at my mom's 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 house. The house that's been in our family for three or four generations now. Oh, that's tight. Fucking bananas. I mean, if my daughter ever stays at it, it'll be in the house for five generations. It's fucking Yeah, dude, you have a daughter. Shout out your daughter. Shout out my daughter, Aaliyah J. How, Rita how old OG. is she now, man? She turns five in a couple dude, uh, months. Dude, that's fun. I remember when, when, like, when your wife was pregnant. I remember that's the, right, bro. I remember the photos. I remember, like... I that remember just how long ago it feels like, no? Dude, five years ago flew by, bro. Dude. I remember first seeing like baby pictures and then because you, you put your family out there. Like yeah, I love that about no, your page. Like man. it's comedy, comedy, and then a little boom. family once in a while. Cause no, that's how it's supposed to be, man. Yo, straight up, because I can't. They want to connect fucking, with the with A lot them. of my page is made for people to see because uh, I delete most of my promotional stuff. I have it up while I'm promoting the thing, mm -hmm. but I don't like to flood my page with it. I, I just want people because I honestly just want to get to the point one day in my career where I can promote for a week, mm -hmm. sell out the shows, and then go back to just being like, I like to inspire people. I like people to be like, yo, look, man, I grew up just like you. I fucking live the same life as you, exactly. and I'm trying to reach my goals. Go ahead, Get out there. Go get your shit, too, because um, yeah. no one was telling me this shit when I was younger. I hope to God that there's like people in their early 20s or, or late teens who follow me, and they're like, this guy grew up just like us. Like My dad and mom were pure immigrants, and now look at this shit. Like, you know? Like, yeah, oh, dude. this guy's doing all right. Like, because we're there isn't Portuguese immigrants coming in like it was in the '80s and '90s anymore. No. But there's still a few that are like, man, in their young 20s that I I feel like I could still reach out to mm -hmm. and tell them like, dude, go get your shit, man. Like, you can be an entrepreneur. You don't have to make a million dollars to be successful. You challenge yourself to make ten thousand dollars. You'll see how hard that is, and then you'll realize how much more work you got to put in and how much mm -hmm. more fulfilling it is, bro. Yeah, dude. It's, your first ten thousand dollars, or your first—you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what we need to inspire our kids to do. Go make your first own ten thousand dollars without someone paying you. Mm -hmm. Generate that fucking money. Yeah. Go find your talent and what, bro? If it's making copper statues that kids—I don't fucking know. Yeah, Just anything. Go find it, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sit in the forest, eat some mushrooms, and re think about your life experience as a whole. And think about what you would like to create with that. What would you like the longevity? There are people who will be alive forever. Mm -hmm. Even after they die. Jimi Hendrix is going to be alive forever. Yeah, his music. Bob Marley is going to be alive for, forever, bro. His image always... will be put up on walls forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He will be idolized. He's in my room. Yeah, of course. You got, you <laughs> I have Bob saying? Marley on my wall. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> no, but real shit. It's like these people left 
um, a lot of destiny for a lot of other people so to kind of relate to their That's what I'm their saying. Journey, go get your little they... slice of the pie and go mm-hmm. leave. If somebody yep. owns a statue that somebody made 100 mm-hmm. years ago, that no person is still alive. Their work is still alive. It's still being enjoyed to this day. But I hope And your that, comedy is 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 in my opinion what is I doing that for you. That That's for weed. And well, I have an album called Pot Comic mm-hmm. that was made by the same artist who makes burners from uh artwork so shout out that guy i think he's also from california too burner's artwork that's sick i'm sure he's from cali I'm, yeah I, i'm sure the artist is also from cali it's i know it seemed sick. just so natural i was like i think oh, the artist is you're from... gonna miss the show at hippie hill I think... yeah yeah hippie hills it would have been sick bro ah uh, yeah dude too short e40 fucking andre nicotina burner it's gonna be the 420 like it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy i, got, I don't know i gotta bro. choose a new 420 to go to because our 420s are starting to get lame. The are you ones kidding? Are good Frisco are, uh, 420, dude? Frisco don't, must be the Don't bring one. any bags <laughs> yeah. and just, you know, Uber, I don't know, park your car somewhere in another city yeah. and then Uber the fuck <laughs> to the city, bro. I don't know, man. Like, Oh, man. It, if I come in the summer, there's a couple things I got to do. Like, I'm going to take a couple days off in July. I got to go to, uh, what is it, Safeco Field or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. I want to go watch it. Uh, I want to go, or Petco Field, whatever the fuck it is. The one in San Francisco. With the open look to the bay, okay. and I want to watch a San Francisco um, game, Giants game. Oh, dude, yeah. Just because it would just be nice to like. I I, I like those parks. I, I I've gone to Fenway. Candlestick. I think it's Candlestick. Dude, I'm no I'm, Candlestick is where the 49ers AT&T. used to play. Isn't it Candlestick Park? Candlestick Park, I think, is the old one where. Uh, dude, I'm so not. The 49ers used to play. I haven't watched the Giants in so many years, man. Yeah, it's, man. I haven't. Even... I love baseball, right? So if I can, yeah, and if fun. I could catch the Blue Jays, it would be even crazier. Oh, Let dude, yeah, in town, what? That'd be sick. Check it out, see if you're going to be in a comeback in July or something, I'm bro. I'm coming back in July. So check check that, dude. That's the kind of shit that we're kind of doing, too. Like, we're planning uh, my birthday. Like, we also want to hit up a Raider game while we're in uh, Vegas. The name has changed. It's Oracle Park now, obviously. Oh, it's Oracle. Okay, okay, okay. But Oracle, it used to be Precinct Pacific Bell, SBC, AT&T Park is the one that I was thinking in my head. Wow, I'm so old. It's, it's crazy how a lot of stuff, like all the headquarters or different things, like the stadium for Frisco, like the San Francisco Niners, yeah. is, is here in Santa Clara. Like it's just Yeah, that's right, because that's the only place that they can build it. The Bay Area is so weird. Like people think like they can go to Frisco and watch, you know, a, a football game, but then, you know, <laughs> it's like shit, they gotta drive another oh, hour. Candlestick south. Park was the old arena, yeah. That <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but I don't remember I think yeah, it's they totally moved it or something. I don't know. Or maybe that was uh, just the name, right? That was the name. They moved it, though. But that was a huge stadium for baseball. Holy fuck. And it was beautiful, dude. I felt like they always like hit it off into the ocean, and there was always boats. As a no, kid, no, I that's remember. the other one. Your th- Candlestick is the old one. The one that you're thinking of is now Oracle Park, which used to be AT&T Park. Oh, so the then I'm not that old. No, Candlestick. AT&T Park is a nice one. Yeah, dude. Fire, dude. I love... I love Northern Cali, yo. Yeah, man. Like, North- it's so nice. Underrated, almost, because the rest of the place gets so much attention, right? Like, LA and Hollywood and stuff. But that place is a fucking mess. Yeah, dude, for real. And that place if you, is a mess. if you're from Cali, like, there, you know there's a lot of shit to do in NorCal, dude, because, yeah. It, there's, it's April, and it's, like, fucking... We got our issues gorgeous. all over the map. Like, San Jose's, San Jose's just changed so much. What's the so much. worst place in California? Like, a place that you would never want to be caught in? Mm, I mean, shoot. We have a lot of issues here in California in general. Yeah, I heard parts of parts of even um, Hollywood Boulevard and parts of yeah. are, are 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 worse than Skid Row at times. Yeah, Skid Row's fucked. S- Skid Row's fucked, but you know, I mean, Sk- San Jose has Fuck, San Jose has a thing called the jungle, or it used to, and that's a little bit of San Jose's history with a lot of homelessness, and it's just it's How just come crazy. San Jose has so much homelessness though. It well, it's. First of all, it's it was the most. I think it was it topped San Francisco as the most expensive place in the U.S. to live. Damn. And the highest rent and. What's uh, rent for like uh, an apartment building, like a one bedroom? There's no apartments out here. I mean, it, it can get up to like twenty five or you even what? more. Yeah, dude. Like, there's it's ridiculous, and they're always building them. They're taking a lot of the local old like nice stuff and just all right buy the land boom you know like stuff they could have you know flipped and brought more businesses local businesses to but they rather you know put in a a lot more um like there was this hill called communication hill kind of by where i picked you up in that area south side 
you could just see the whole hill now. Kind of reminds you of San Francisco, where it's kind of by the freeway. You see all of the apartments, and they're all coming. That in. wasn't like that when I was a kid, bro. There, all of that was just a hill. It was called Communication Hill. And fun fact. Nice. Fun fact. Shout out uh, Batista Vieta. He's a local, local guy. Uh, local. Um, I don't know where he lives now, but he it's Batista Vieta. I, I love that he, name. I hear he owns that uh, Communication Hills and stuff. Yeah. So. The streets are named after Azores, um, the islands. So one's Azores, one's San Miguel, one's San George. Like that's nice. It's pretty sick, dude. See, when you go there, it's like, oh, I'll take a picture next to the, you know, San Miguel. I've done it, like I've done a photo shoot there. But anyway, that's a cool, like a little stop to go check out a little. It's actually like a workout spot in San Jose. A lot of people go there. But um, real shit, dude. Like, there's a lot of shit to do in San Jose. And going back to what we're talking about. The worst place. I mean, you don't want to get caught in Oakland. Is Oakland still bad? Like, yeah. confidence isn't bad anymore, right? It's like I mean, hipster, o- right? Just, to, just don't, don't, you know, get in anybody's business. I think you'll be fine anywhere you go. What's Oakland about? There's, like, is there like a downtown some, Oakland? Like, is it like a little city somewhere? I hear Stockton is the worst right now. Still tough, eh? I these, hear are, these are legendary, Cal- by the way. Anybody listening who doesn't know, man, I don't know. Cause we might no, but this, from this is these something. These are legendary tough places in California. This is just stuff that I've heard. That it's actually a real thing. Like they got issues. They got a lot of issues it's out there. A lot of gang vi- gang violence. A lot of gang violence. And there's just all separated. Straight like, the fuck up, bro. And the more you, crazy. you raise rent in places that you want that shit out, so you gentrify it, obviously. Mm-hmm. The, the more um, concentrated these these low rent areas will become. Or even the higher renter. Like a lot of people are, are going to be leaving, and it, sometimes it makes it easier for the rent to be more affordable for for the people that are making it more shitty and they just live with it you know or or it's it's a bad area and you're still paying twice as much like god that's so it's like damn i gotta get the fuck out of here but we're over here that's why you gotta go to austin texas boy where's where's rogan at i'm i'm fine where i'm at at the at the moment but there's parts of yeah san jose where it's like damn man this is san jose's tough huh we saw that winnebago on the side of the road and there's like a barbecue next where you're like all right Dude, like Holding on the side, all the freeways now, bro, and it's all these tents. I mean, these people gotta take shelter. They gotta live. I mean, I get it, but it is it's it's we, too we crazy out them, here. We just just get, I, you know a designated area is just what they need. Fuck, bro, you're gonna you're, well, you're gonna tent. We've on been anywhere. down this route before, dude. I mean, if you look under the freeway, there's only like twenty little homes that they built, and then some some parks actually have little. Like, they look like cages, bro. It's like a little thing you can rent for, like, $10 a month or some shit where you can literally just lay down. You can't stand up in it or anything. It's super weird what they're doing. Like, I mean, I hear it, it's it's hard to control this. Why the fuck it's would hard. anybody even charge people for that? I know. Just give it to them, just bro. Give it help to it, them. Help these fools out. Like, let them save money. <laughs> bro, like, if all because you're not wrong, but some of them just need a shelter. And a lot of them aren't to, crazy or a lot of them aren't, like, too institutionalized from the streets or too street, you know, whatever it is. It's like... Some people just are down on their luck or they have a legitimate job and, you know, they're just saving up or they got this RV instead. And, you know, like lie, there's bro. so many RVs, bro. You go to Fremont. Because you can live in RVs an RV. all over. You can live in an RV mm-hmm. in California. You can just park it somewhere and it's like, bro, fuck, this is pretty much all you need for a basic living. Somewhere mm-hmm. to sleep, somewhere to cook, somewhere to shit and you're done. I mean, like. There's there's a fine line be- now between like the actual culture. I mean, it's nothing to joke about, but people are actually just giving up on, you know. I think it was during COVID they just fucking wanted to start traveling and stuff. So that van life shit right now is huge. Like That's I hear good. there's like a shortage of vans, so it's so easy to just sell. If you want to sell a van, boom, people are gonna b- turn it into like their a house, little apartment. That they yeah, can dude, on. and and you know from TikTok and whatever. Those look whatever good, apps, but I mean, you could see exhausting life. what. And how did how did you end up up here? Like, almost like some crazy shit, man. Like I don't know, dude. I'm about that paranormal life. It's almost like a paranormal sh- or you know supernatural or you know I don't know, bro. These guys message me. It's good, man. Well, I mean, this was such a good chat, though. Like, no, really, though, man. dude. I I really do appreciate this finally fucking happening, bro. And like you coming down and taking the time, bro. Like, if you got time to get some in and out, dude, let's go get some food. I'm actually hungry, but. You know, I mean, let's fucking uh, let's wrap this up with some positive uh, plugs. Let's get some plugs in here. Like what? Piz what, lugs. What can we do with this? What, what kind of plug can you plug for the plugs? All right. 
shout out to anybody who's listening right now. If you made it to the end of the podcast, because I never do, because I got pure ADHD issues, so I, I'm always <laughs> I always dip halfway through a podcast. But if you made it to the end, <laughs> yes, and you're one of these cats, make sure to. And if you're Portuguese, especially because that's going to be the concentration of our a lot of our fans. Look out for my album that's coming out this year. It'll be the first ever fully Portuguese, Luso, Canadian, American. It was like a full North American fucking team effort. Guys from California. We all teamed up and, and I recorded a sick album in a beautiful theater and it's all Portuguese. And um, it's what? not all Portuguese. It's in English, but it's all about Portuguese and growing up Portuguese. It, and it's going to be coming out. I'm going to be honored by the uh, Portuguese Canadian consulate as one of the most uh, influential 75 people in the, the last 75 years. What? For our community. Yeah, crazy shit, bro. I couldn't believe it. This is... Dude, so you're an influencer. You're, like, you're huge out there, bro. In like, the Portuguese world, bro. That's awesome. It, it's it's like... um, Like, man. And it's only going to get bigger because there's no one else doing it. So I'm like ahead by... A lot, mm-hmm. and if I, let, I hope to God there's other dudes like who come out and kill it. But like, it, it's just nice to be able to do stand up and be able to represent our people, and to be acknowledged by the Portuguese Canadian consulate. And bro, you're such a good guy, bro. Like, you don't let it get to your fucking head or anything. You're not arrogant. You 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 no, know you got this wow, title like, behind you. You're 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 that fucking would be such a bad place. Oh my god. Exactly. Can you you're imagine? Good, you're good Can you fucking imagine people. I came and I was like, uh, uh, can we wrap this up? Yeah. <laughs> Never, bro. In my head, it's like, nah, dude. You're really, dude, you're really chilling, a, a approachable, dude. And, and anything you really want to do, man, you're gonna get because you're you're really making other people influenced by what you're saying, your words, and even if it's just your comedy and you're making like fun of what we do, it's a good type of making fun. It's, yeah, I'm it's, not making fun of it in a bad way. I we want need to make to fun like, of ourselves, we bro. We what need... are we doing when we do this kind of stuff? And I, I personally like your comedy out of out of all these guys, but I shout out to all of these guys doing anything and in, in their skills, and, and, and I've always listened to your shit, bro, and real honor to even have you fucking here, man, honestly. Yeah, you're so funny, you, man. You've been out here, you've been, honestly, dude, like... I, I love coming out here, man. You, I got but, a little circle, you know, but I, I do have a, a circle of friends that I keep, like, through my travels, you know, because you yeah, literally, yeah, as a comic, meet, I'm not even kidding, thousands of fucking people. This is once in a while you meet somebody, you're like, look at this guy, this guy's fucking hilarious. <laughs> you don't even know why they're funny. You just know that they're funny. <laughs> By the way, they come and they say hello to you, because everybody says hello the same way. Everyone... Mm-hmm. Who doesn't? Who just wants to meet you? But there's some people who wanted to that you want to meet. That's the easiest. Okay, most right. times when you meet a fan, they want to meet you, and then sometimes you meet a fan and you want to meet them, and and then there's a couple. Bro. Yeah, brother. You, you met one of my other homies from out here, little mm-hmm. Mikey from the Earthquakes uh, Rowdy Boys. Right, he used to come to the bar a lot. Yeah, I man. haven't seen him in a while. Love that dude, man. And and, and that dude is, is nothing like. He's not a celebrity or anything. That was when we, yeah, I pulled up to the hotel and he was already there. It was sick. Like, love that we dude, all just man. Kicked it. it yeah, was love sick. a local like. Love a local pothead. Love a local tough guy. And Mikey gets to cover both of those. He's hilarious. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Love those kind of cats. Yeah, Yo, we had a lot of fun today, man. That was good. No, dude. I, I appreciate you fucking coming by. You taking the time and everything. Oh, uh, man, I'm trying to think of anything else I can pitch before we sign off, bro. I don't know. You got... So... Um, oh, what, there's what a you're comedy doing? special at the end of the year. Fuck, I don't know. Boom. What, what, and what about July? July, I'm going to be in, back in California. We're going to be doing a cross-country, uh, cross-state tour. Bam. We're going to be doing shows in North Cal, the Bay Area, and South Cal. Um, make sure to come check us out. I think we have dates even like in the beautiful uh, I'll post the dates. Beach. you got to send me the dates. and I'll, I'll send I'll, you the dates, yeah. Yes, sir. We'll make this shit sick, bro. I'll, I'll post everything up on there. And, man, everybody go check this guy out. Have time to go check out one of his shows and stand up or if you're portuguese um and you know you see that he's one of the headliners that's a treat yo All right? check that out man please man so episode number six portocali tv portocali tv thank you guys for watching like comment subscribe nice mike reed is in the house appreciate you bro good looking out brother Happy we to did be. it we did it <laughs>